What's up guys, Taker25 here. I've just completed the trip to the east completionist cape requirement. First off, I'm going to say that if you're ever attempting the comp cape, this requirement can take some time, so it's best to plan ahead and make player own ports one of your dailies if you haven't done much of it yet. Ports are something that players either really love or hate. It's not really a grind, but it does take months to see decent rewards depending on your daily input. Now this video is not going to be a complete player own ports guide, I'm just going to show you how I went for the trip to the east achievement. This video already assumes that you have some working knowledge of ports and aren't just starting from scratch. The trip to the east requirements can be confusing to some players, so I'll break it down for you right here. So it's been a long time since I did ports, but surprisingly I've completed quite a bit. In fact, upon checking my captain's log for the first time in years, it turns out that I had already done a lot of the stories, in fact all of the stories that I needed to do. I actually already had access to trio voyages, and that's what you're going to have to unlock to complete this achievement. So there are several adventurers that you might find around your port, and each of them belongs to a story voyage. For example, for Eastern Curiosities, you have the Chef, the Trapper, and the Architect. For Hugh Ji, the one that I did, you need the Convict, the Missionary, and the Biologist. Now there are icons you can build around your port, if you go up to the top and select Upgrade Buildings and scroll backwards to get to it faster, you'll see Icon Hotspots 1, 2, and 3. So the first Icon Hotspot I have the Mammoth Head to attract the Biologist. For the second one I have the Stocks to attract the Convict. And for the third I have the Ceridominist symbol to attract the missionary adventure. If any of these adventures are at your port, you may have access to complete a story voyage for that adventure. You have to complete all story voyages for all three adventures in the same storyline. That means that Taker, back in 2015, already knew what to do. So thank you, past Taker for setting Future Taker up for success. As you can see, I had already done more than nine for the biologist, or more than seven for the biologist, the convict, and the missionary. There are seven story voyages for each of these three adventurers. So doing some simple math here, you need to complete 21 story voyages total before you get access to the trios. I'm pretty sure I was actually going for the comp cape back in 2015 after I maxed, so that's how I was able to do that. I was just surprised at how far I had gotten. I was just sending out my ships and thinking about making this video and it turned out that I already had access to trios. So you only need two out of the three adventures at your port to attempt a trio voyage. So in my case, I believe I had the biologist and the missionary at my port, so I had access to start a trio voyage in that storyline. I don't quite know where to check and see how many trios I've done, but all I know is I have unlocked a trip to the east. I've done the 21 story voyages like eight years ago, and I had to do two more trio voyages, and then I got the achievement done. You need to do three, but I must have done one in the last eight years. Also, you can get duo voyages where you don't need to have the stories complete, but you do need to have the stories complete to get the trios. Okay, to get the trios, you do need to have the seven story voyages for each of the three to get the trios. So, how do you even do this? Well, first you need to reach level 90 in at least three of the following skills. Agility, cooking, construction, divination, dungeoneering, fishing, Herblore, Hunter, Prayer, Runecrafting, Slayer, and Thieving. If you're going for the Comp Cape, I think it's safe to assume that you already have several over 90, but I don't want to assume that's what you're going to need. 
Um, so using Huji as an example, you need 90 plus in Herblore Prayer and Thieving. So once you've got your skills, you've got the adventures in your port, how do you have a successful mission? This is where you actually do the ports and where a little bit of luck comes in. You'll notice that many of these story and trio voyages have hefty requirements for your ship's morale, combat, and seafaring abilities. The best thing to do in that case is to balance your ship out as best as you can and hope for the best. So I actually have four ships here. I think you only really need three unless you want to have a fourth ship just with like balance stats. Uh, but balancing your ship out is pretty straightforward. So for example, right here I'm going to do this mission, the Terracotta Men. Uh, this is just a standard voyage. And you can see that I'm going to need uh, morale and combat. But you're not going to be able to get 100% on this journey. So basically what you're going to do is balance your ship out to get the as high as morale and combat as you possibly can. So let's get rid of all this seafaring stuff because I'm pretty sure this was a seafaring boat that I used. So this is already pretty balanced. I'm using the highest rudder that I can. Let's get some combat guys in here. This is probably a bad example just because I don't currently have the uh, morale crew up. But let's get this captain who has pretty high morale. So now we need to boost morale. Basically, check this out. If you only have 50% morale and 86% combat, your chance of success is based on your ship's lowest stat. So only 50% morale, only a 50% chance of success. Now I'm not going to send out this voyage just because I wouldn't send out a voyage that has less than 60% chance of success. I want to shoot for at least 70%, but sometimes you can't get that far. A 60% chance of success is a 60% chance. You're more likely to succeed than fail, but you can also have partial success, which will not complete the story or trio, and your ship can be damaged. But of course, you can upgrade your ship, crew, and buildings to give you a better chance. So that's what I would do in that order. My ship, my crew, and my buildings. Although, to be honest, I have been slacking on my buildings. For the ship though, I still have a few more unlocks that require some terracotta and unlocking the final region, but luckily for this achievement you don't have to unlock the final region, you just have to unlock up to the pincers, which can be shown on the archipelago map right here. Uh, as you can see, I'm only 17% to the next zone, but that's a zone that I obviously don't need because I have already unlocked what I need to. So for the ship, I would upgrade the deck, the bow, and then the stern, and of course you can upgrade the rudder too, to complete voyages faster. You can also unlock the totem of navigation on Anachronia for a 15% decrease in your port's voyage time. That could certainly be very helpful as well. Uh, the top piece is found by rummaging through some rubble east of Anachronia's Slayer Master. The middle piece is when you find 40 ancient zygomites around Anachronia, and the base is from searching two overgrown idols on Anachronia. So far, I only have the top, but I'll be unlocking that soon. It's pretty easy to get, and I also need to have an active totem on Anachronia to complete the stacks on stacks comp cape requirement. So I don't really plan on doing ports too much now, but that's going to be very helpful if I do plan on maxing that out. A 15% decrease in your voyage time is pretty good, although you'd still only be able to do maybe two sets of voyages per day if you plan it right. It all depends on what you get. I mean, there are 15 to 16 hour voyages, there are also 20 plus hour voyages, uh, but that would be decreased if you plan it right. If you're just starting ports, your voyages are going to be much shorter. As for the crew, it's kind of embarrassing to show you my crew because I have like I haven't upgraded them in a while, um, especially since I already have access to trios, so you can get there by slacking on your crew, although crew upgrades are quite affordable, and I do recommend getting better crew members and captains. Also keep in mind that your crew levels up as you do more voyages. So it's one of those things where, you know, you just gotta play it to level it up. 
So for buildings, as I've said, I've upgraded some of them, but I have been slacking. I did upgrade my bar to the one that's nearly maxed. I believe I have the luxurious bar. I have also upgraded my office for an additional ship spot, but I don't think I need it. Like, I rarely send out four ships at a time. I think three is fine. One for combat, one for morale, one for seafaring. And I would use my fourth as a hybrid for some of the easier voyages, but if you're focusing on the story and trio voyages, you'll want to use the best crew members that you can anyway, right? So I don't really think that a fourth slot is all that useful, unless you just want to do a simple voyage with your remaining crew. Um, you'll likely need a well-balanced ship and not just a specialized combat ship, for example. So if you already have, like, a ship with high morale out, and you need a well-balanced ship that has a, that needs a lot of morale and a lot of combat, you're gonna need those high-level morale guys. Sometimes it's not all well-balanced, as one of the voyages for the Hugh G trio requires a 20k morale ship, and that's just morale. Upgrading the warehouse could be a good idea in the early game to boost the resources you get per mission. At the point I'm at, I'm not too worried about collecting resources anymore, but it's definitely worth it, particularly in the early game. In addition to your ship and crew, you can also apply effects, such as a lifeboat to save your crew members during failed voyages. Uh, lifeboats are a little harder to get, but they're so worth it since they're a permanent upgrade to your ship and you can prevent loss of your captain or crew. Okay, so a failed voyage is one thing, but it kind of sucks to lose a crew member or even a captain on top of that. And after all, you can't have a ship without a captain. Uh, Fortune of the Sea gives a 10% boost to rewards. We also have ration packs, powder kegs, and bottled cries. This gives a 10% boost to morale, combat, and seafaring respectively. So that could be a good idea if you just need that extra push in one of your stats. The Bag of Winds, which I have a couple of, increases speed by 10%, and the Lotus Tint Spectacles grant a 50% increase to crew XP, so they level up faster. Uh, you can get these by playing mini games around the port, so if you see that uh, golden icon up here, such as above Sea Singer Umi right here, that's a mini game that you can play. But that's about all I've got for this video, once again, assuming that you already have ports experience. If not, there are plenty of great guides out there if you're just getting started. I hope by now that you know what you have to do to check off the trip to the East Comp Cape requirement. I'm so glad I got this one out of the way because it can take a while, especially if you're just starting from scratch. Do it now, for sure. Start it now, make it one of your dailies. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below to follow me on my Comp Cape journey. Best of luck, and I'll see you around Gilinor, my friends.